Bitcoin exchanges are sometimes criticized for possibly not holding the like amount of money needed to cover people's uh, you know debts on the website, what the website owes them. But um, companies, uh, Bitcoin exchanges are now uh, doing proof of reserves uh, audits to prove that they do have everyone's money, that they aren't going to pull a Mt. Gox anytime in the near future, and that um, even if everyone on the uh, who uses the website were to withdraw all their money immediately, the website would be able to give it all back to them immediately. So last week, well, last week we talked about OKCoin. Okay they have 104 uh, percent reserves. And now this week, uh, Huobi, which is another Chinese exchange, um, did a proof of reserves, and they have 103.5% reserves. So uh, good progress in, uh, in Bitcoin exchanges um, uh, doing this uh, without any regulation forcing them to. They're doing it on their own and uh, servicing their customers at the same time by showing them that they are, that they are solvent, that they aren't going to go gox anytime soon. And um, yeah, progress in in uh, in Bitcoin exchange land. Uh, and also, just as a side note, um, Stefan Thomas of Ripple Labs uh, did both audits for OKCoin OK and um, Huobi, and he did it for free. And uh, he he wouldn't take any compensation. He asked the exchanges if they if they felt like they had to pay for his services to donate money to the Ludwig von Mises Institute. Hmm. So, um, so yeah, he did that for free on his own time, just to kind of you know boost confidence in the exchanges and keep them going. Because at this point in Bitcoin's uh, evolution, they're pretty important because it's pretty much the only way uh, people have uh, you know mass access to Bitcoin. So. It's important to keep them uh, that they stay solvent, yeah. and uh, hopefully this uh, uh, auditing will become a th thing. I, I know um, OKCoin in particular. I, th I think it was OKCoin. I, I might be mistaken, but they said that um, they would be uh, taking on a regular schedule of auditing. So. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, hopefully this like encourages other exchanges to follow suit, especially the ones that are. That are uh, you know engaged in margin calling, because um, they don't they don't necessarily have uh, proof of reserves or they don't necessarily have um, you know solvency because they possibly use uh, users funds to to um, facilitate margin calling. Is, is is that is that about right? Like how do, how can how can proof of reserves um, improve the um, improve the confidence in exchanges that participate in margin calling it's um when they, the the two exchanges that i know of it might be more but the two major ones that um that have uh margin trading services bitfinex and btce uh both of which recently suffered flash crashes uh which most people think was due to the to margin calling um so it basically it would work out one of two ways. One, they either have less than 100% because they're taking money from other people's accounts to loan out to investors so they can um, buy more Bitcoin essentially than, than they can pay for and they're betting on gains and the price to pay off their debt. Um, in which case, they would essentially be operating as a fractional reserve bank, um, which is very dangerous. Uh, or they either they, they have... Um, in excess of 100 percent, they they have enough to um, cover everybody's deposits, um, and then they're plus some, and they're using that leftover. Uh, like say, for instance, if Bitfinex has 102 percent reserves, they would use the two percent then to to lend out and keep the rest of it safe. But uh, and that would be no, fine, right? That'd be fine yeah, that, to do. That would be fine because. Um, the you know that whatever extra they have in excess of the 100% reserve ratio that's just their money that they can do whatever they want to with um like it's not owned it's owned by the exchange it's not owned by any customer um but we have we have no way of knowing without a full um proof of solvency audit uh whether or not uh Bitfinex and BTCE uh which method they're using if they're doing going the fractional reserve route or if they're just using leftover uh, if they're using their you know their profit to uh, contribute to lend out money uh, we just don't know until they until, until they go through audits yeah. so. 
Yeah, so hopefully they will. They should if they uh, if they want to prove themselves as you know legitimate businesses. Yeah. So, um, like other other third parties who are trying to increase their confidence with uh, customers and consumers, uh, Coinbase announced this week that they are fully insured on their Bitcoin funds. Anyone who holds Bitcoin on Coinbase is, is insured. Uh, they use like a you know a very high rated. Um, insurer with you know high rated underwriters so um, apparently the coinbase has been insured for like the past year but now they've basically come out and been, been public about it because a lot of other services um, are talking about their their great like insurance of, of, of Bitcoin funds like Zoppo is talking about their insurance so coinbase isn't exactly like an exchange in the traditional sense uh, like try and trade bitcoin on coinbase um you're not going to do very well because it takes like five days for your bitcoin to show up in your account um and you can't exactly like store fiat on coinbase so it's not an exchange but uh they are trying to improve people's confidence in them and basically saying that you can hold your bitcoin with us it'll it'll be fine even if we get hacked or if an employee steals it or if something else terrible happens a server failure i don't know it's insured, um, you know. Uh, I don't. I don't know what how much it's insured up to, uh, but you know, it's it creates more confidence for people who are who might be afraid of you know things like losing their Bitcoin, um, and you know it's not F, it's not FDIC insured. Blah blah blah. Well, it it's, it is insured by someone, and. Um, you aren't you aren't going to lose it that easily if you hold with Coinbase. The only thing with Coinbase is they are fully like regulation compliant. They're ahead of the regulation, uh, fully A AML KYC compliant. So if you do use Coinbase, yes, your bitcoins will be safe, but you might be restricted in some ways in in using your Bitcoin or selling it through Coinbase um, if you engage in like gray area activities like gambling on seals with clubs um people have been reporting issues about uh withdrawing their bitcoins to coinbase and then trying to sell it through coinbase funds that they won through seals with clubs on poker um they can't do that through coinbase basically because coinbase is you know basically the regulator's bitch at this point i don't want to i don't want to sound too um like harsh but it's it's true like they're they're totally dedicated to all these regulations and in order to be completely compliant they can't really deal with people who they know um through some kind of blockchain analysis they know that they're engaged in gray area activities or even straight up illicit activities so coinbase is not the way to go if um if you are a poker player on sales of clubs but besides that um it's pretty safe to hold your bitcoins there or it seems that way. Um, so yeah, Coinbase, another another company that is trying to improve confidence uh, in them in themselves by talking about how their bitcoins are insured, and that they also will not go the way of Gox anytime soon. I think this is a big win for the free market too, because uh, whenever whenever uh, whenever you're talking about free markets. Uh, in regards to banking, and it, it, you know, it always goes towards the Great Depression. Uh, there was no, there was no federal insurance system for the banks during the Great Depression, and everybody lost their money. Like without the FDIC, uh, who would protect our money uh, from from getting from it being stolen or lost or something? Well, the free market, obviously. You know, Coinbase doesn't have an FDIC. No Bitcoin exchange has an FDIC, but a lot of them. Um, well, not a lot of them, but Coinbase is, you know, they're getting private insurance on their funds. Uh, Zappo has their, they have all their deposits insured. So, yeah, there's your answer. Who's who's going to protect your money when you put it in a bank? The free market will. 